What's going on, everybody? Welcome into the Tuesday, September 10th, 2024 edition of the Daily Energy News Beat Stand Up. Here are today's top headlines. First up, an ESG backlash erupts in Europe on world's strictest rules. Next up, back here in America, Bank of America sees utility stocks outperforming as volatility climbs interest rates fall next up our favorite state the golden state of california is turning brown without continuous electricity ooh 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 next up we'll go internationally here opec plus reportedly to begin oil production increase in 2025 according to our friends over at smp global and then finally chevron pulls workers from offshore oil platforms as tropical storm nears probably had something to do with where prices went today i will cover all that and a bag of chips guys as always i am michael tanner joined by Stuart turley where do you want to begin hey let's start with our esg story and the words of kamala harris that's esg esg backlash erupts in europe on the world's strictest rules oh my goodness this is actually from bloomberg and when you sit back and take a look michael ESG investing in oil and gas has actually done a great thing. You and I have talked about that a few times on the show. In this article, it really covers some good things. Over the past five years, a period of which Europe started formulating the world's most ambitious ESG regulatory framework, the U.S.'s S&P index has soared more than twice as much as Europe's benchmark over the Strox 600 index. Wow. So the U.S. guys did it right and did it better than did their counterparts in the EU. No, I mean, hey, all the free market, I I, I sound like a broken record. The free market will ultimately <laughs> decide. I'm just it's everywhere for everyone watching on YouTube, which I recommend you do. Free market will decide this whole stuff. Guys. Absolutely. We saw this coming from a mile away. And I, I love the fact that Total Energies, Total Energies, they're getting all mad that, that Exxon's valued higher. Well, well, because, of course. And, and you know what? More power to our, our great. And, and the thing I also don't like, these ESG regulations. I mean, these ESG scores, I should say. Cigarette oh, companies yeah. have higher ESG scores than Tesla. I mean, hey, come, come on. on. Who's smoking what, right? That's a good pun. That was a pun, in case you weren't paying attention. The biggest risk of European approach is that the energy investive industry, at a, it put the whole energy intensive industry at a significant competitive disadvantage, said Dimitri Papadopoulos, chairman of Greece's Titan Cement International and the European Roundtables Committee. If Europe's share of these global sectors is lost, others from elsewhere will simply pick it up and prosperity will go there. Really? Wild. All right, what's next? Let's go to the B of A. B of A seeks you sees that utility stocks are outperforming as volatility climbs, interest rates fall. Bank for those in the political arena, B of A is Bank of America, higher volatility in the thing that prefer the tortoise quality in income to the hair growth and re rating. She wrote in a note to clients saying that utility returns have matched those of NASDAQ over the long term. Utilities are also beating tech stocks this year. I'll tell you what, tech stocks are finally coming into their own and you take a look at them, but there is one number that makes a difference, Michael. Good management makes good numbers and Duke Energy, those kind of utilities that are going for the all above and the energy policies, they will survive and they're the ones to invest in. Yeah. I mean, in a recession, utilities will always be outweigh their other other cyclical industries if only because we will always need to heat our homes we will always need electricity and all of this other stuff so it's basically i think what bank of america is saying without saying it is is we're forecasting a recession wow well done i like that without saying it but saying it but oh absolutely i like that that was pretty fun hey let's go to the next one here 
Golden State of California is turning brown without continuous electricity. This one's from our buddy Ronald Stein. I love me some Ronald Stein. California focuses on intermittent electricity generation from wind and solar as demand continuously is generated for electricity continues to rise. Michael, I had, was on this morning with the Energy Realities, and there was a video from a lady that we played in, in Australia. And where Australia really went into the Green Energy Fund and the, and the real money issue is, is that turbines still require electricity. So you may have a windmill sitting there, but it requires gr- money and power from the grid until it gets enough spin so that it can then put back in. Well, guess what? The Green New Deal and net zero policies in California, supported by Governor Newsom and the Democratic presidential candidate Kamala Harris, has led to the state's most expensive electricity and fuel prices in America. Increasingly high cost of living, houses, transportation, coupled with an increase in crime, smash and grab riot robberies, homelessness, pollution, and congestion that many taxpayer residents are leaving the state. I got one favor, please. As you leave California, deposit your voting practice there. Do not bring them to Texas and Florida. Yeah, please don't. Stu, I think what we need to do is we need to do a live show from San Francisco and the Castro and see how long we can make it before one of us gets stabbed. You first. <laughs> Podcast listeners, that's that that's that's a machete. One of my favorite lines, you know, I, I always think of this when somebody pulls out a knife. It's that scene from Crocodile Dundee 3. And this is a knife. That's not a knife. This is a it's knife. A knife. <laughs> that's a machete, dude. It's my no, I mean, one of I my mean, hunting knife. Great- Great article from Ronald Stein. You know, it's it's clear that the net zero policy is going on in California. It's completely it's completely drowned them in in electricity debt. I mean, they'll be never able to get out of it. You know, the fact that they're still threatening to shut down Diablo Canyon just goes to show it's turned into a, a political nightmare. But, you know, it'll be interesting to see as what happens in 2024. I think if Kamala Harris wins. You'll see California continue to go insanely left because Gavin Newsom's got nothing to run for in 2028. I think if Trump wins, you my prediction, the zig where everyone else is zagging, is I think you'll see Newsom come a little bit to the center to set himself up for 2028. So if you're in California and you want things to calm down, maybe vote Trump. Wow. That's some kidneys up there, man. I mean, look at me kidneys. just throwing out, throwing out highly in-depth analysis this whole show. It's why you guys tune in. So, all right, what's next? Let's go to OPEC. Well, let's go to OPEC Plus to begin oil production increase in 2025. Three bullet points. According to the vice president of research at S&P Global, OPEC Plus has decided to extend production cuts until the end of 2024. The alliance then plans to start adding supply in 2025. Weak oil demand, particularly in China, concerns about the slowing economies contributed to the market's bearish sentiment. Quote, we think in 2025, the first time in a couple of years since the first time in 2022, OPEC Plus will increase production, Burkhart said at the conference in Singapore, organized by S&P. Wow. Wow. I mean, here's the thing. I think OPEC, they're going to have to start adding barrels back to the market. To think they were going to constantly live in a supply shortage was asinine. They're going to, they got to, they got to put their oil on the market somehow. Now, I think what's interesting is there's a big argument going on right now is will OPEC actually bring these barrels back online because they don't actually have these barrels and all they're doing is signaling to the market that they may or may not have. I mean, that's, that's a tried and true theory that's been out there for a while. So it'll be interesting to see what happens in 2025. Do they have the ability to actually bring all this oil back online? I think the answer clearly is yes, but it does remain to be seen. I'm not sure because I think that they've been almost, that's a great question because their production numbers versus what they're actually, their cash registers ring, which are two different sets of books, don't match. So I don't know. Kind of like our books. Trust me, we just did tax. <laughs> had to spend a lot of time doing reconciliation. <laughs> Holy <laughs> smokes. All, All right, right let, what's next? Let's go to Chevron. Chevron per- pulls workers from the oil platforms as tropical storm nears. Three bullet points on this one. 
From Zero Edge, Chevron announced that non-essential employees and contractors have been pulled from the four platforms in the Gulf of Mexico ahead of the storm. Topical Cyclone 6 or Invest 91L turns to South Mexico Monday. Forecast become hurricane. 60% of the U.S. refinery is right in the path of this bad dump. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah, I mean, I think it's part of the reason why you're, you're seeing oil prices spike a little bit is mainly due to the fact that I think there's there's going to be some shut-ins here. What are they calling this tropical storm, Francine? Yeah, I'm not sure. Just depends if there's any uh, geoengineering ahead of time. Let's check the, the chemtrails in, in front of it and see if they're really out there. I don't know. <laughs> hey, you know. Well, if we need to, if we need an update on on chemtrails, we'll just make sure to check your Twitter feed. I'm sure you'll post something hey, on that. It's okay to talk about it now that RFK Junior. is gonna is on on board to stop it. That's a good point. That's a good point. I I do love how now everybody in the Republican Party is all over RFK now that he's endorsed Trump. Oh, isn't that um, great? I just, it finds me. It just it just cracks me up. Oh, I was all for him early on. Yeah, same here. Same here. Yeah, I'm sure you were. I was. I just okay. Well, well, we'll 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 believe you. You got anything else in the new segment? No, I'm good. Off to you. Let's go have some entertainment on your side. All right. Well, we'll we will jump over to finance here, guys. But as always, we got to pay the bills. Thank you for checking us out here on the world's greatest website, w.energynewsbeat.com. All the news and quote unquote analysis that you just heard is brought to you by that website. Stu and the team do a tremendous job making sure it stays up to speed. Everything you need to know to be at the tip of the spear when it comes to the energy and the oil and gas business. Go ahead and hit that description below for all links to the timestamps, links to the articles, and all of the links to specifically our Substack, links to our YouTube channel. Please go ahead. If you have not already, go like and subscribe to us on YouTube. We really appreciate that. Other thing, if you're interested in our direct working interest project that we're partnering up with our friends over at the Crew Truth, Pecos Country Operating, and Ray Trevino, go ahead and go to investinoil.energynewsbeat.com or you can check out the description below pretty pretty light week for finances Stu. we'll, we'll kind of get into it all in a bit but we'll read kind of top line numbers here first off s p 500 up 1.16 percentage points nasdaq up 1.909 percentage points two-year yields up about three quarters of a percentage point 10-year yields actually drop about two tenths of a percentage point dollar index up about a half a percentage point bitcoin up about three percentage points and about fifty seven thousand dollars crude oil up 1.5 percentage points 68.61 nice little overnight swing and then we also have seen crude oil or, or brent was only up about three tenths of a percentage point natural gas down about five and a half percentage points two dollars and 14 cents our xop contract ironically it's actually down about six tenths of a percentage point, even with oil being up. So not a great sign for all oil stocks. Again, I think a lot of today's price action, or I should say yesterday's price action, specifically has to do with where this hurt this uh, tropical storm for him seeing that is coming. A, a bunch of different, you know, shut in specifically from an offshore standpoint are going to hit that. We didn't quite see um, really anything else. We'll be gearing up today to hear what the API says on that crude oil inventory. You know. It should strengthen into a hurricane by Tuesday, according to the National Weather Service. And, and the refining capacitor, I think, is going to get hit pretty hard. So I think we might see a, 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 a small spike up specifically in in gas prices. But we'll we'll have to tune in for that. Again, as Stu mentioned, I think there's, you know, OPEC is, is considering whether or not to go ahead and, and, and increase more oil. You know, obviously, again, I think they're doing a little float, float out there to say, hey, we might increase in 2025, hopefully continue to to stay that in we also did see morgan stanley cut its brent oil forecast from 80 to 75 gunvor and trafigure two global commodity traders they actually anticipate ranging between 60 and 70 dollars per barrel due to both china demand and what they're seeing is a persistent global oval global oval supply that's a mouthful right there Stu, the only other thing i saw i wanted to throw this in here at the end title of the article texas billionaire who has greenpeace usa on the verge of bankruptcy. I, I, I mean, here's the thing. I'm no fan of Greenpeace. This is where we're just going to have a little fun with this. I love this. This is awesome. This is uh, for all you, for everybody out there, energy transfer led by Kelly Warren, kind of CEO, right. man in charge over there, is on the precipice of bankrupting 
Greenpeace USA over the course of a lawsuit regarding the Dakota Access Pipeline. That's something we haven't talked about in a while. I remember when our we first started doing this show, every other story was something going on with the Dakota Access Pipeline. But now there it's back in the news specifically because Energy Transfer and Kelsey Warren are out there suing them. And this is unbelievable. You know, basically what they're alleging here, Stu, is that Basically, the lawsuit is alleging that several, and I'm going to now read straight from the article, Energy Transfer's lawsuits alleges several Greenpeace entities incited the Dakota Access protest, funded attacks to the damage pipeline, and spread misinformation about its project. The case is set for trial in February. They're going to a trial for this here in a North Dakota state port where, or court where both sides are expected a fossil fuel-friendly jury. Well, I would hope so. If you live in North Dakota, you better be fossil-friendly. Energy Transfer is seeking $300 million dollars in damages which would likely wipe out greenpeace usa according to the group's leadership d papa Hama mama la, 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 i don't know how to pronounce his last name but that's the greenpeace usa's acting executive co-director said that the loss due is quote an existential threat to the group oh it would be this is where i'm just going to be biased man i hope energy transfer wins this would be fun to see because i mean here's the thing in all fairness, this is mainly out of spite, and this is sort of what the article goes on to say is this is a little bit of vindictiveness and not necessarily, I mean, if you look at what they're alleging, funded attacks to damage the pipeline, spreading misinformation, I'm going to be the first to stand up and say we shouldn't, we don't want to be setting court approvals that funding misinformation is now liable to be sued because right. that's going to be used against us. That will be used eventually against us. So this, obviously, there is some vindictiveness in here. I'm just biased and say, man, I hope this actually goes through. It would be great to see Greenpeace USA have to declare bankruptcy. What do you think about this? I think it's fantastic. And and I think that after the first 15 years when Pat, Dr. Patrick Moore was there, Greenpeace was completely different than it is now. It is a weapon, weaponized into a activist left-wing group that supports political parties and makes politicians money, they don't do what's good for the environment. So Greenpeace has lost their way, and I think this is fabulous. Well, absolutely. And, you know, I think they, as clearly, they overshot their hand with the Dakota Access Pipeline. I, I do find this hilarious. Again, I go back to, I wouldn't necessarily want legal precedent to be you can sue for misinformation because that's going to be weaponized against all of us soon so i hope we can see we can kind of forecast into the future and see see what happens much like the chevron decision originally when that got passed in the mid 80s that was a republican leadership and a republican house had they had seen how it would be weaponized in the coming years maybe they would have thought differently so we always have to think to the future on these things that'd be my only my only steel man argument for this one oh i i agree what else you got Stu? that's all i've got Oh, it's just going to get crazy. Hey, I'll tell you what, I'm looking forward to the debate. Oh, you're right. You will hear the debate today. We'll have a full breakdown, well, probably on Thursday's show, because we'll probably record tomorrow's show a little bit before the debate, but we will break down. Maybe we'll have to do a segment after the debate and kind of just add that in. We may have to do a little segment to add in, because it would be really interesting to see what they're going to say. I, I definitely think fracking is going to come up. Hear- fracking is definitely going to come up. If only because she's flip flopped on that multiple times. Vivek Ramaswamy, I love that man. And I want to tell you right now if we, that CNN clip of Vivek really articulating Kamala Harris's no frack, frack for you, no frack for you was phenomenal. Yep. And so if we see that come around on that, believe me, I'll have a few screen clips of that. Here's my thing. I'm okay with somebody flip-flopping if they can articulate why they flip-flop, and it's because of facts. What I'm not okay with is flip-flopping because they're putting their finger up to the wind and saying, ooh, where's the political spectrum go? Now, so that... I'm I'm completely okay with food. I love being wrong because then that means I can change my mind and it means tomorrow I'm less wrong because I've got, you know, I'm all about being wrong. The problem is you have to admit it and you have to state with clearly I've moved from this position to this and here's why. And I think people would believe. So she just came out and said that and said, yo, I was against it. I learned some stuff. 
while I was in office, and now I think we can clean, you know, we can achieve a clean energy future without banning fracking. I mean, done. The situation is done. right. The problem is she's left it open now by trying to gaslight everybody. It's like, well, I've always been for it. It's like, well, no, you haven't. We 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 have the internet. This isn't North Korea. We can Google things here. Yeah, I mean, you've it, it's out there. Absolutely. So, all right, guys, well, with that, we'll let you get out of here. Get back to work. Start your day. We appreciate you guys checking us out here on the World's Greatest Podcast. Energy News Beat for Stuart Turley. I'm Michael Tanner. We'll see you tomorrow, folks.